What up, everybody? What's good? It's your boy, BQ. This is the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. I'm rocking with you guys solo, and this is the Cool Factor Podcast. Coming to you late. It seems like they're always coming to you late. I apologize for that. You have no idea. I can live with dropping a podcast on a Monday, but when I have to drop it on a Tuesday, it absolutely eats at me. Uh, But this was a difficult weekend for us. It was my reserve weekend. It was TW's birthday, and I'm not even sure he's uh, not still hung over from it. And then uh, what else? We got the WrestleMania and all the shows going on this weekend. So a really difficult time for us to link up. And again, it absolutely eats at me when I have to record on a Tuesday because then it gets so close to Thursday when Impact is coming on again. A lot of people don't really care to check out the podcast, so... I keep saying we're going to work on that and I, we truly are. Uh, but it's just, it is very difficult for me. That's all I got to say. So let me throw this out there first. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit of news here, uh, review the show, but I got to let you guys know ahead of time. I haven't watched the full multiverse of matches yet. I have, I've watched some of it. I've watched part of it. I have an idea of what went on during it. But I didn't get too too far into it. I only got to fire it up today. And uh, I really didn't get to watch anything on the weekend. I watched the uh, first few matches of the Ring of Honor pay-per-view. And let me throw this out there. For those of you who may have seen it or may be curious, the production quality of this show was pretty good. And I don't know if, it, it, if the Ring of Honor pay-per-views are typically like that because it's been about three years since I've ordered one. I don't know if they're typically like that. Or this was Tony Khan influence, but it looked really, really good. It was really easy on the eyes. And you guys know me. I'm always talking about impact just not being easy on the eyes. Very easy on the eyes. Very just balanced with the colors. Very bright. Very sharp. Uh, You know, they set up the fans the same way impact does, but it's not like so depressing. You know, someone, I think it was a shout out to AO because I think it was you. Brought it brought it up today. Of all the things I'm always talking about, the presentation of the show, I've never picked up on the can the hard camera, where it comes from like a, I don't know, I guess from underneath a little bit, and we get a lot of the the background. And you know, as I've said a hundred times, the probably more than a hundred, the Tron in the back is really distracting. Way too much going on, but even with the fans, like we don't hardly see them we just see the the freaking ring and the wrestlers to where even on the pop tv days i just i just realized this today pop tv when i saw the the picture pop tv spike tv all all these eras destination america the camera was coming from the top a little bit so you could see a lot more of the crowd uh and a lot more of the action and an action that and the action from an angle that i think we can connect with it a little bit more you know what i mean so that, that's just something interesting uh, that was, you know, <laughs> brought to my attention. Someone tagged me in a post today and I was like, yeah, you're right. You know, um, but ring of honor has the same setup, but it, but it's like not depressing. Like you see people engage with it. Now I was listening to Jim Cornette's review of the ring of honor show. And he had said what many of you guys say in regarding to the regards to the setup, you know, he was bringing out, you know, there was a few thousand people in that place. But the way the hard camera was showing, we saw five rows of fans and, and like that was about it. Every once in a while, it would cut to some people. But we've been talking about that forever, wishing Impact would do that, which, you know, we could get. We get better photos from the fans and better videos from the fans who attend the tapings than what Impact shows us on TV. Uh, we see it on Facebook a lot and a lot on Twitter. We see these really cool photos and we just see all these people there. And then we watch the show and it looks and feels exactly the same. You know, sometimes we can hear the crowd more than others. Sometimes they're more engaged. Sometimes it's the freaking audio issues. But it just seems like there's a better way to do it. And they probably have their reasons for it. But that's how we get excited about the show. And that's how it's, it's fun to us if we see people having fun. T- TW talks about that all the time. We want to see people having fun in the crowd. And we just don't see that. For all we know as a viewer, there's 100 people there, you know, so they should 
want us to see when there's there's more. I know that at the impact zone in Orlando, we have people just five, six rows up sitting on their hands and or we have people with their back to the action and they're probably trying to avoid that. But they're still showing some people at the on the on the uh you know in the first couple rows sitting on their hands. So it's clearly it's not bothering them that much, but I do feel like they're trying to avoid uh, you know, because with Orlando, we could see when it got empty, we saw people leaving, and maybe they're trying to get away from that distraction. But I would like to see more of the fans. But this Ring of Honor show looked really, really good, sounded really, really good. And I, I really do worry if that is the production quality, because Ring of Honor's production quality was horrendous. But if they, you know, Tony Khan's not going to let it look like that. You know, and if, if it gets, if it looks clearer and crisper and easier on the eyes and sounds better, that's going to be tough for impact folks. You know, I've never asked impact to look like NXT, which is crystal freaking clear. I've never asked for that, but we, we do want it to look better because the other wrestling shows on TV look good. And even though impact is a smaller company and doesn't have that budget, like you can't put on a YouTube show on, on TV, basically a uh, YouTube quality show, not the quality of the wrestling and the creative. I just mean, visually, you know, it's it's going to hurt them. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, folks. Uh, but let's get into this real quick. Uh, at the Multiverse of Matches, Ty Valkyrie came out. And I think we all expected that. We all expected her to be the one at some point to challenge Deanna Perrazzo for the AAA belt. Because you notice when she puts the titles on the line, it's typically the Ring of Honor championship. Which also, the fact that they crowned a interim champion. Tony Khan likes doing this. He did it with the TNT championship, crowning an interim champion because Diana wasn't there for one night. And then the ring of honor Facebook page with the banner that shows all the champions is, is Mercedes Martinez, not Diana Perrazzo. They got the interim champion and it pissed off a lot of people, but I can start seeing AEW influ their influence over that ring of honor Facebook page. You know, I talk about the impact, Facebook page is dead. That's done. Like, like you cannot bring that back at this point. But AEW and now Ring of Honor like to have, they like to have the banner with the champions, you know. And, and fans like that kind of stuff. Fans will download that kind of thing, you know. And I've even thinking lately, it's a social media marketing technique. Why do, why does an impact do a wallpaper Wednesday? They they take so many photos of the wrestlers prior to each set of tapings that the wrestlers are just posting them on Instagram and Twitter, like, oh, here's my new photo. You know, man, they could do something better with that. And I've, I've for the last couple of years, talked about where's the knockouts calendar because that, those sell. And someone told me the other day, well, it's not going to sell. I, I, I can assure you, all right? I just paid $250 for a cut up Alicia Edwards t-shirt and people paid a lot more for some of the other ones. The knockout stuff sells. It doesn't matter what the hell it is. Every, people still use calendars. This is not the Stone Age, and it's not so far into the future that people don't care about calendars. That would sell. And this is one of the better-looking group of knockouts, too, since they last did a calendar, so I think I feel like they could pull it off. But anyway, Taya Valkyrie comes out. This is what uh, we expected at the Multiverse of Matches, but we expected her to be involved at some point. I fully expect that she's going to take the title off Deanna. Like, Deanna was one of her last opponents in Impact, and she lost. She tapped out like she's not she's not going to lose again. But it seems like uh, what what dropped from PW Insider was that we're going to see more of Ty Valkyrie that hopefully they're going to keep her on full time. I think she would be excellent for AEW, but it's we're at a time where I should we're at a time we've been at a time where AEW keeps signing all these people. I, I just you know, it's not a good time to be a free agent. So I think it's better for Ty to just return. We don't know if she's just going to sign a short-term deal and just do dates, it would be nice to see her back. They never, I shouldn't say they never could replace her. I think Jordan Grace stepped into her role pretty well. You know, it wasn't like when Kylie Ray left and I was like, yo, they can't, they couldn't replace Kylie Ray. Like that, that killed them. And they, they didn't for a while. But with Taya, I think Jordan Grace, even though she's a baby face and Taya was a, you know, heel, I think she stepped into that role of just really, impressive knockout you know to really go out there and put up awesome matches can do a little intergender stuff you know so 
I think it's really cool to see her come back. She'll probably link up with Bravo again, I'm sure. And she was always one of the better parts of the show, the more entertaining parts of the show. The matches were always good. And she came such a long way from when she first debuted. Like now, you know, she's she's a true star now. And she definitely, you know, in her short time in NXT, she definitely, I can assume, uh, assure you, tightened up her craft a little bit. So she's going to bring even more um, and it's gonna, it's just gonna be awesome. So I'm really happy uh, to see that. Speaking of that as well, they're talking about the Briscoes impact, if it's at all possible, bringing them on. They will at least do sets of, you know, or uh, sets of tapings or dates because they lost both matches at WrestleMania weekend. The high, they probably had more. I think they had several matches actually, but the high profile ones they lost. Multiverse matches, and then um, I didn't see that match, but I was, I, I believe they lost, and then. Uh, the ring of honor won with FTR and they lost the belts. So clearly we knew Tony Khan was going to get the belts off them because he doesn't want to be involved with them. That's a win for impact because their tag team division has been really rough. Not because the talent isn't there, but because the good brothers have ruined the tag team division and their time is coming up. Machine gun tweeted out, you know, we got these offers and this and this and this. I think the impact fan base in general would be really disappointed if they resigned you know if you have good opponents for them that's different because that was the big difference when they did sign there was nobody for them to fight so it's like they just put the belts on them right away they weren't motivated and and they were they were boring they were bland the bullet club stuff is a lot better they do a lot better with that but this is a huge win the fact that AEW doesn't want to use them for some old tweets. Impact has never given a shit about that kind of stuff, which is good because we're in this like weird one mistake society. We've been like that for years now. I mean, what if I told you that someone just might change over the course of five years or 10 years or 12 years, you know? And, you know, that's why I was even upset about that Me Too movement thing they had going on because there were some wrestlers there that, you know, we change, we improve as people, we're better, we all make mistakes, and we all do things and say things behind closed doors that are shitty. We all do it. We all have said something in our life that if it got out from our inner circle, some kind of inappropriate joke or, or whatever, you know, it would be viewed just the way we view these wrestlers. Like, we act like we're freaking perfect. It's, it's crazy. And I say we, just like as a society, we act like we're perfect. But in fact, has always been willing to give people a second chance, you know, third chances in the case of Alberto El Patron. But, you know, you remember when Rich Swan came on people, I mean, they were destroying impact for that. You know, I would, I think impact would bring Tessa Blanchard back. The problem is she hasn't appeared to look within herself and fix some things. You know what I mean? Uh, It's like when you pretend you're the victim of, of something that you caused, you know, that's not a good look, but, it is a big win for Impact. It would make the tag team division a lot more exciting. And I thought the Good Brothers would put some butts in seats. Like, they clearly can't, but the the Briscoes would. People would tune in for the Briscoes. You know, uh, just excellent team. And I, I'm excited about that. Next week, they're doing IPWF. You guys know I hate IPWF. I've said it many, many times that the company has making, I mean, having fun making the show confused with people having fun watching the show. I know some of you do like it and there's nothing wrong if you like it. I don't think it's good. I talk to enough of you on social media that I know the majority of you don't find it good. I, I wouldn't be shocked if the viewership is in the absolute dumps for this show and maybe, just maybe, Impact will look at that and be like, oh, Maybe this just needs to go on Impact Plus or YouTube. It's an extremely niche show. Sorry, I had a brief pause there. I had to, had to hit the pause button. But it's an extremely niche show. They wouldn't put Knockouts Knockdown on TV. Probably because I think it's a niche show, but more people would watch that than this, you know? So they have a weird, they have a weird obsession with this show. 
and again, I think it's because they have a lot of fun making it, and they just ha- they just really have that confused for it being good. Now, those of you who like watching it, awesome! Like more power to you. Actually, I wished I liked it, you know. But the you know the the kind of point I want to make here is that the pay per views in a couple of weeks, they can't afford to put that on television. And the reason I say that is because when, you know, shit. What do I say every every single episode? What have I been saying for four years that their marketing is is shit? But when they do good marketing, it does well. People are talking. People are buzzing. Like it does work. They just don't know how to keep it going. They don't know how to keep the buzz and the chatter going. They haven't mastered like the follow up to okay. People are talking about this. They haven't figured out how to capitalize on it. That's because they have people with good ideas working for them, but because they don't have actual marketers, like they don't know how to take that to the next level. So AEW is always on people, the top of people's minds. Like they, you know, WWE is always on top of people's minds. Now, granted, they have a lot more coverage from the media, but they always got something going, man. That's got people talking. Like they find a way Monday through Friday to get people talking about their show. Impact doesn't have that. They don't have a good relationship. I shouldn't say they don't have a good relationship with the media. They don't have a relationship with enough influencers who influence a wrestling audience. Like, you know, I, I talked to you about, I listen to Jim Cornette. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't watch Impact. He acts like it is totally beneath him. But if he were to watch it, he would see that all the things that he complains about with AEW and WWE, Impact does well. They, they don't have relationships with guys like that, you know, surely, slowly, but surely they need to get to that level. But my point is they don't, they're not on top of people's minds Monday through Friday. They've never been able to do that. Sometimes they come up with something big, some news and people are, are really talking about it for a bit. And then it, it, it dies down. And because they're not a company who can keep, who can stay on top of people's minds and have like real professional marketers in, in, in key roles, you can't put on a show like this because you, pe- people are going to forget about it, you know? And when they post, and then they start posting these clips on Twitter. You know, I remember last year, not, la- uh, not last year, but two years ago, Hard to Kill was in like three or four days and they were still posting clips and videos of Ben Dover and Jackass and uh, Johnny, you know, Jiggle, Jiggle Tits. And, you know, it's just like, Man, like you really want people to see this stuff, but you got a you got a much bigger show coming here that really needs your attention. I just don't think they can afford to put stuff like this on TV because people a lot of people aren't going to tune in. I, I don't think this viewership will be over eighty thousand. If it is, great. I don't think it's going to be. But that's that's you know what's it been uh, last week's maybe one twenty, you know let's say it's eighty thousand. That's like a 40,000 person drop off that is not thinking about impact wrestling on Thursday. And they're not going to think about it on the weekend. They're not going to think about it during the week until impact comes on again on Thursday. And then they got to play catch up and be like, Oh yeah, there's a, there's a pay-per-view going on. And I think they're going to do the same thing this year that they've done in the past. They're going to keep posting the the videos and the clips and people are going to think that that is the current impact wrestling product. Because, again, social media, marketing, they don't really do the best job of telling people, hey, this is a parody show. You know, they, they put that out there a little bit, but it's not crystal clear if, you, if you're not a, someone who follows the company on a daily basis or who watches each and every week. So you, you'll see. They're going to post that stuff. People are going to leave comments. What the fuck is this? You know? So I, I think the, I think the show hurts them. If they want to do it every year as a as a Thanksgiving show, cool, put it out on Thanksgiving, or or you know this year they did it as a YouTube show, cool. You know before I didn't agree with it being before Hard to Kill, but if they want to do that, cool. But keep it keep it off television because at the end of the day, the their biggest audience is television. It's not YouTube. It's not this other stuff. It's television. So only put quality on. You cannot afford to take weeks off so that's all i got to say about that let's talk about this episode 
I give the show a B minus. You know, last week I think it was kind of a C plus. It looked mainly because it looked horrible. It looked so bad. It looked better this week. Some of the darker tones were a little too rich for my taste, but for the most part, it still looked okay. I thought the multiverse of matches looked better than an episode of Impact, to be frank with you. Like, I, I, it was a little dark, but it was more like a lighting dark, not, you know, in editing making it dark. Because I think the, I think the arena is a little lighter than we, we view it on television. That's, that's my assumption, at least. So I give it a B minus. The good stuff was good. The bad stuff was just, yeah, you know, it, was not, it wasn't horrible. My, my opinion on why Impact's viewership is really dipping right now, I, you know, last week it went up, but the stuff that people were tuning in for and they were really excited about after Hard to Kill, it's not a thing. You know, where was Honor No More on this show? Eddie Edwards did this heel turn. Eddie Edwards should be on a weekly basis leaning into this heel turn and, and, and having promos and having matches with the top baby faces, the ones we like. Not even top baby faces. They don't have that many top baby faces. But like they had the, the match with Rich Swan. Next week you take on Willie Mack. Um, I would say Trey Miguel, but you know Jake something would have been a good one for him to go against too. Like guys that the fans really like and lean into that uh, – you know, the heel thing. That's what the AEW had to do with Daniel Bryan because he was so liked. They had to really put, they had to put him against baby faces who were in their hometowns to like force the booze, you know? And Eddie comes out and he's just kind of doing the same shtick. Like we don't really get to hear him speak a whole lot. We don't, you know, it's very short segments. Honor No More, when their guys come on screen they and they wrestle, they lose. Has Mike Bennett freaking wrestled on this show besides maybe like, the one five on five match where they got to stay and then maybe another tag match. I don't feel like I've seen Matt Taven win. I don't think I, I think um, Vincent might've won one. Cause I remember his finisher is a red rum, but he's taken some L's PCO. He's his own thing right now. He's not even an honor no more. And who else? Kenny King has wrestled twice and he's lost, you know, with the exception of that five on five match. So I, I'm just like, why isn't honor more taken over the show? You know, that was one of the real interesting parts for people. That was one of the best storylines in wrestling period going on. Why didn't we get more of it? Why didn't they just like, really, how can we, what let's challenge ourselves to make this even more interesting the next week. And that's kind of what I was going back to saying earlier is that you have these good angles where you have good creative or you have your good marketing or whatever it is. And then it's like, uh, and it just kind of falls off and they don't know how to keep it going a lot of the time sometimes they do a lot of times they don't and i think that's hurting the show right now because now it's just kind of getting back to an episode of impact they're putting a lot of you know focus on josh alexander we're gonna we're gonna talk about him versus Matt fulton here in a little bit but um i got i wrote down some numbers so uh when i say numbers i mean times because i was just curious the opening of the show with we own the night and with the the uh the the clips the clips from last week took a minute and 54 seconds to get through and what i learned in a lot of youtube marketing was that you've got 20 or 30 seconds to hook someone you know that's why like my intros are typically pretty quick you know the 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 one i use for most of the youtube content the the logo that flashes and you know the podcast stuff's a little bit longer but you know it's a seven second uh clip because you know if you if you have a 30 second intro or a minute intro like people are gonna tune out like that's you know when you're watching whatever on tv one of your sitcoms or whatever or what you know that that might recap or a, or a reality show like it's pretty quick you know a minute and 54 seconds. So two minutes into the show. Um, by the way, the spear that Josh Alexander's wife took was awesome. I wrote the uh, one of the guys who does the post-production on Twitter. I left them a comment like, please don't play wheel in the night in the back of the spear, uh, in the background of the spear. Like I could totally see, you know, here's what happened. And it shows the spear and it's da na 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 da na 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 You know, I was positive they were going to do that. So I don't know if I had influence on that or not, but 
you know, thank God they delivered it the way they did. But these recaps, I don't think are necessary. I think, uh, I think it takes up a lot of time. I think it takes up too much time, but two, um, almost two, two minutes. And then we get Scott Demore uh, immediately. Um, and I get it. You, you got to, that's the hot angle right now with the way impact went off the air with Moose at the house and the spearing his wife. Like you got to kick it off with all that. I totally get it. It just has to be a better way of doing it. There has to be, there is a better way. I know there's a better way, but the show <laughs> almost two minutes of the song we get the backstage segment. We get Gr Gresham on the mic. He is he is not the best promo in the world. Uh, Kenny King comes out. He does a promo. He he sounds really really good. Doesn't win. He never wins. But he, he sounded good. It's it's original. It's not like just phony shit, you know. But they do their thing, and the bell rang for the this match at eight minutes eleven seconds. That is too far into the show to start the action, to start the, uh, the the meat of your show that you're trying to get people to watch and to get engaged in. When it's like almost 10 minutes of clips and talking, dude, like that's that's no better than Monday Night Raw, you know? You you got to they got to get into it. They got to get into the action like a lot quicker, like a lot quicker than that. But I think the 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 clips the highlights are unnecessary i think there's a way to to sprinkle them throughout the show um you know you know to just to make it better but i understand you got to kick it off with that you got to kick it off with scott demore you got to get his screen time you know like totally get it but th there, there's just got to be you know a better way um so i don't know uh but gresham and kenny king have a match we know who's going to win, like, before it even started. They, they put the graphic out, and, like, we knew who was going to win. You know, there's no mystery here. But uh, but it was a good match. It's good to see Don Jonathan Gresham on Impact Television. Again, not the most charismatic promo, but, but you know, has good matches. That finisher he uses, it's, it, it's different. And maybe you have to see it more. But the times I've seen him use it, the finish comes off super flat. Like it's just this one, two, three out of nowhere that no one's really expecting. You know, it, it just completely, completely out of the blue. But it comes off flat in my opinion. You know, maybe maybe you you don't feel that way. Um, but I but I think it does. Um, after this match, they run over the multiverse card, and um, it, it's the we own the night. But they run over the whole card. They're better than than Stryker and uh, D'Lo were, and much better than Josh and whoever whoever he was with. When it comes to reading the cards down, you got to be faster than that, man. They they linger on it so much. You know, some of you guys might not like Excalibur. I really like him when he's just like da da da. I mean, he's letting you know, and the music's got energy, and like you feel it, you get excited, and you know, you know. Um, but it, but it's just slow talking over, and they're faster than the others, as I said. But it's still just slow talking over. We own the night. Um, you know, I wrote this down to <laughs> at the end of them going down. It was, by the way, they're going over the multi match of universe card. That's what they were going over. At no point did it say how to order the show. There's a little fight logo on there, but that was it. They were just like, join us for multiverse of matches tickets available people are more likely to order the show than they are to attend who are watching the program it, it, you're talking about the over to, overall totality of you know 120,000 people are watching like most of them are going to be ordering it but it's just not you know it's just a little fight logo but at the end of multiverse and we own the night it is the 19 minute and 38 minute mark and I, <laughs> I know I know it pissed some of you guys off bringing this up so much. I counted up We Own the Night. It played for a fifth of the show so far. So it played for a total of four minutes in the first 20 minutes of the show. 
right? That's a math. That's a fifth for 20 divided by four. A fifth of the show is the song. Um, but, but yeah, you have to communicate. I, I was saying this about the, the, the YouTube shows, man. Like they don't, they, they build the cards on TV. They say, you know, re, rebellion, not rebellion. That's the pay-per-view, but uh, I can't even think of one off the top of my head. Under Siege is coming. That's what's coming next, right? Or close to it. They're not just like, this is how you watch it. This is what you got to pay for. This is the value that you receive for your money. It's just not communicated. It's it's craziness. So Deanna Perrazzo had an interview promo in the back that I thought she sounded really good. Like usually, and people bring this up a lot, she usually sounds a little shaky. She was really, really confident in how she delivered this. So she sounded good. She's clearly improving that side of her. And she, you know, she probably hears that too. She probably hears the the, the shakiness and maybe it's, it's nerves, you know, but she's, you know, sounded uh, really, really good. After this was the Chump Chump Challenge, uh, Swinger, and Zicky Dice. So I predicted Impact was going to cut down on comedy a lot, and they have. Because last year was, especially the year before, my God. There's only two funny people in this company. It's Johnny Swinger and Brian Myers. And that's it. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I, I can't think of anyone else. Oh, I, I, I find Tennille Dashwood funny. I'll... Some of you don't. Uh, and then, you know, Caleb. Caleb's still borderline for me. But there's only like two legitimately funny people. Like if you were to sit down and have a conversation with you, they'll probably have you laughing. Uh, I, I guarantee you Brian Myers is like that and, and Swinger. The rest of it is always like forced comedy. But Zicky Dice works with Swinger. It, they look similar, you know, in their, with the fanny packs and everything. They, they work. As, as a team, he's a better fit than when he was with the learning tree, you know? So anyway, they do the chump chump challenge. We don't really know what to expect from this. We don't know if it's a couple jobbers, you know, ham and eggers. Uh, we, don't, we don't know what it is. So what I wrote down in my notes here is that this was a great decay spot. I was fully, now I get it. Rosemary had a match later and Black Taurus was on BTI and blah, blah, blah. okay. But the male members of Decay need a freaking win. I mean, they you you they went down to Jonah. They went down to Carl Anderson. They went down to uh, Lou Gallows. They went down to them as a tag team. I mean, they don't beat anybody. And uh, I thought it was a good spot for them to come out and get a dominant victory. I thought they needed it. You know. But Decay also has this weird connection with Johnny Swinger, so that led to nothing. Led, by the way, led to absolutely nothing. A couple of weeks ago, they like came to his aid. It led to nothing. So what was the point of it? Because you know now that you did that, you can't really bring them out to fight him. And this was a good spot for this. Was not a good brother spot. I get why they did it. It is a way to promote the match, multiverse of matches. But it was the last the last team that anyone wanted to see come out. So we get a heel versus heels match. It's a dominant squash match. It did nothing for Swinger and Zicky Dice. I don't know what they're trying to do with them, but this was all about Gallows and, and Anderson. No one wanted to see this. But again, I really, and I'm you know, curious if you guys agree, I thought it was a great decay spot. I really thought it was a good opportunity to play the music and the entrance and then to come and just just get a, a a dominant win you know i guess they also have nothing to do right now so maybe there was, it was pointless for them to do it to have a match but i mean there's plenty of people on this show have wrestling that are doing nothing you know um after this they had pco yelling like a nut in the crowd and then he's good oh no I, I, dude, at first, I didn't even know what he was saying. I didn't even pick up on the fact that he was yelling for Jonah. But uh, Jonah comes out, and the action was good. But they are trying to do cinematic. They're trying to do Lucha under what made Lucha Underground unique. And I don't think it's working. You know? I, I, I would have, uh, again, corny music in the background. That doesn't fit what's going on. 
you know, they've done worse. Don't get me wrong. They've done worse. This wasn't the worst song they've played. But they do the backstage stuff, and, and, and instead of just, like, letting us take the emotion, and they, they throw this music behind it. They have a stock library that's, you know, royalty-free songs that fucking suck. Let's be honest. Um, I didn't think it needed that. I thought the whole segment, if you wanted to put music at the end when it showed after he buried him and it showed, uh, you know, PCO uh, up close and he was huffing and puffing, like that's when you can kind of hit him with, with something. But um, I thought the music took away from it. But they're trying to do cinematic. I don't think it's working. It comes off because of the music mainly. The, some of the cuts are really weird too, but because of the music, it comes off more like a B-movie than a cinematic masterpiece. It's closer to a B-movie than to uh, Final Deletion, you know? I know Final Deletion was kind of corny too, but it's 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 like a B-movie. It's like a C-movie. It's straight to DVD. It's like straight to USB hard drive, you know? Like it doesn't even make it to the DVD. Like that's that. it's closer to that, um, you know? But the, but the action was good. Everything that Jonah does behind the scenes, like off camera, not off camera, out of the ring is always really, really good. And this is a a few people have interest in you know they had a match it was I, I liked it for two big dudes like I, I liked it you know and the pco character some people have their opinions on it some people like it some people don't i wouldn't say i'm a huge fan but it's really different compared to everything else on the show it's very very different it's a very different character and i like anything that just breaks up the monotony, you know, like that's why Ring of Honor was always difficult for me to watch because it was just like no one had any flavor whatsoever. It was just, you know, strawberry ice cream for two straight hours, you know, and I like strawberry ice cream, but I mean, like, give me a topping or maybe throw me a vanilla, throw me a bone, throw me some chocolate, something, you know what I mean? So PCO breaks things up a little bit. So I do like that. I, I again, I, I just thought the music was made it come across come across corny and if i were a casual fan and i was watching that i would say what the fuck is this after this i've been waiting to talk about this josh alexander takes on madman fulton glorified shit match squash match it's possible that they're writing madman fulton out of the company with this match very possible i don't know anything about that I could see that's where it's going. You know, East Austin left them and, and all that. So it's, it's very possible. And if I, if I were him, I would, I would get out immediately. I know not everyone can be pushed. Not everybody can win. But, like, this dude doesn't win. There's too many people in this company who don't win. And the, the roster is too small to have jobbers. Like, if you want to have a jobber, bring in a jobber. Like you're doing for Masha Slamovich. You know, but, you know, Man Man Fulton is just always in this this – role i mean i i i feel like i've never seen i know he's won because i've seen his finisher maybe twice maybe that was in squash matches but he doesn't win i thought that this match did more for madman fulton than it did for josh alexander i think it was a complete inverse of what impact was trying to achieve i thought it built sympathy sympathy for madman fulton because we like him the impact fans like him they want to see a not, not necessarily a push, but not to be a, a joke. You know, like he gets squashed, he taps out. You tap out Man Man Fulton. And then after the match, he he tries to come back from behind and hits him, ends up right back on his ass. You know, they, they played the ankle broken segment. They've got the referees checking on him. Like that's building sympathy. They try to make Josh come off like the, he's just pissed off, badass, you know, that's I, I think maybe you guys disagree. I, I wouldn't be shocked if majority of you agreed, though. I think it did more for Fulton than it did for Josh. I don't think people left being, oh, Josh is such a badass. I think people were just like, dude, what are you doing to Madman Fulton? And then when you show him in the ring and pain and the people checking on him, that's what you do for baby faces. Maybe there's a baby face turn coming. I don't know. I would I would lean more towards him probably being done, you know, and that's that's not okay. Like he should have been a lot better than he was used. I guess wrestling companies don't know how to use big guys. I, I you know, <laughs> I mean, it, it's like you take a guy like Lance Archer. He never wins the big one ever, but he wins. He wins against guys that he should beat that are beneath him. 
you know? Fulton doesn't beat anybody. He didn't beat anybody in OVE, and then it seemed like, oh, we're going to put him with Ace Austin, like, still can't freaking beat anybody? You know, and now they got him talking, so it's like, you don't have to make him a bodyguard. But I I really think it did more for him. More for Fulton. If he comes out again, he's going to get cheered. I, I mean, if he's coming out doing a regular match. It, it's, it's just wild to me. I'm not one of the Josh fans in this, in this world. I, I appreciate what he does. But I think that I could be wrong, and, and I may, may offend some of you by saying this. I think most people like him because Impact is telling us uh, this is the face of the company, and we're desperate for a face of the company. We haven't had one since EC3 in, in his earlier years um, when he was a heel, unfortunately. And you know, and, and then there's the guys like AJ Styles and all that. They're trying to tell us, hey, we're, we're trying to attach the wa- hitch the wagons of this guy. So I think a lot of fans are... are talking themselves into okay we're gonna get behind this you know but i'm worried it's gonna get into like tessa blanchard territory that it's not organic and they're like oh do this this will get you over and and, you know rich swan had that problem too that where he he had that gauntlet match and and everyone was on the rich swan train and it was super organic and for a couple weeks everyone wanted to see rich swan wrestle and then he got hurt and then they came back, and then they for- tried to force him back into that role, and it didn't connect with the people. So I, I, think, I think they're forcing things with him a little bit, but he is doing a good job. He's grown a lot as a wrestler. They're, they're doing some pretty good storylines here, but I think a lot of us are appreciating the, the brilliance of Moose <laughs> more than anything. you know. So I, I still think he comes out. We, we, TW and I keep talking about this, that, that, that freaking music. It was a heel theme song, a heel tag team theme song. Like this wasn't the Hart Foundation song, you know what I mean? That Bret Hart was able to keep and like people would pop. It's a tag team heel song. It's not good. Um, I I wish when they brought him back, there would have been some degree of repackaging, you know. Um, But yeah, I'll say it again. I think it did more for Fulton than Josh. Uh, Trey Miguel and Speedball Bailey had a segment backstage. I just wrote cringe. I thought it was super cringy. Uh, Trey is an afterthought in this um, in this match coming up, this triple threat, which I'm I guess I'm interested in because I know it's going to be good. But I was, you guys know, when they had the qualifying matches and shit, I'm like, dude, just put Ace Austin and Speedball Bailey in the match. Like we know who's going to win. Don't waste our our time. And then Cardona had a backstage interview I thought was really funny talking about his historic reign as a digital media champion. The digital media championship works for him. When he drops it, it's going to go the, the way of the, the grand championship, folks. Like, I, I will bet anything on that. He's going to make it fun. I don't even think he's going to defend it hardly because he's the NWA champion. So I think they have to like kind of protect him a little bit when he's wrestling. Even though he tapped out a multiverse of matches, I totally hopefully i can review that for you guys totally disagreed with that finish i mean it uh, we'll talk about it more later i'm probably going to review the show tomorrow but it, once he drops that title it's going to mean nothing it, it's a prop now but he's just entertaining enough to make it work but it's it's once he drops it it's going to be a piece of piece of crap i wish they did more interviews like this outside of their you know their their locker room because the lighting is really good. You don't have to put all these f- fake pink and green lights and all this shit, which I don't hate them for doing that. They're trying to jazz it up so it doesn't look like, you know, when they were at Skyways, it was just like record. They were just taping in the same three places every single episode for like over a year. And it was bland and boring. And I wouldn't, you know, I think some of these are done in the same places, but they put the lights and they make it, they make it work. It, it's silly because why would you have lights on like that backstage? But it works though. It, it it definitely works. But the way they just did this interview, like everyone just looked good. It was, it had lighting. It worked. So do that, do more of that. Knockouts battle Royal. Uh, the knockouts come out to, we own the night. Um, they were playing the song. Uh, and I know uh, shout out to Pat. He told me all the women came down to, we own the night. 
this was except for Savannah Evans, who got a entrance of all people. And I get that you're trying to get Tasha Steeles out there to the ring to do commentary, but Savannah Evans, you know, and then they play, oh, Savannah, she's going to be so difficult to, to eliminate. She's eliminated like in the first four people. I brought this up to TW and he kind of laughed at me. We were talking about who the hell is going to chant challenge uh, Tasha Steele to as at this point. And this battle Royal was cool, by the way, I, I enjoyed it. Who's going to face Tasha Steele's. And I said, why not heat up Rosemary? You know, you can use Rosemary in case of emergency, not like Petey Williams, but like, you know, uh, because people actually like really behind Rosemary, no matter what they always, he's always over. So um, I think it's a good, I think she should win the belt. <laughs> She's due for a title reign. I mean, come on one time knockouts champion, but they're probably going to keep Tasha going. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if Rosemary didn't take the, take the title off her. Tasha's not exactly looking like a dominant champion after taking a pin uh, her, you know, in her first match after, um, after this, they show the black Taurus um, clips of him versus Diener. Uh, what's his fuck? Uh, the, the announcer, uh, Penzer, he, he announced him as Cody Diener a few weeks ago. Um, but then they kept saying Diener here. So those of you who watch BTI, maybe could tell me if he's Cody Diener again. I don't think he should be Diener. I think he should have a full name. I hate singular names. Uh, but Black Taurus versus Diener uh, to we own the night. And, um, you know, cool finisher. Black Taurus should win more on television. And then they cut to a promo of after losing him holding the tag team championship <laughs> and Eric Young tell you how dominant a faction they are, you know, now he did acknowledge that Diener lost and they basically have to avenge that loss. And at least he tied it into what happened because Eric Young's a freaking professional and Eric Young picks up on shit like that. He knows he can't cut a promo about the dominance of the team when the only guy who wrestled from that team on the episode lost his match on the basically the pre-show. So that's just the difference between being a professional, not being a professional. Uh, they're going to do this big tag team match that I, I don't know what to expect from that at all. But um, Upinder Gujar, um, I'm going to call him Gujar. I don't like that Gujar pronunciation uh, versus Aiden Prince. So I guess Aiden Prince is possibly signed with the company now. He's on the roster page, and people get really excited about the roster page, but anyone who's on the show is on the roster page, if you guys haven't picked up on that. If you're on the show for more than like a couple episodes, you're on the roster page. You know, they had Phantasmo and all, all these dudes. And um, I don't know what they're doing here, honestly. I was expecting uh, Raj Singh and Shira to come out. They were, they were nowhere to be seen. They keep doing Brian Myers on commentary, which I enjoy, but they keep doing a commentary for these matches. And I think it's only the Bupinder matches. Um, I thought this was going to be a squash for a second. It, there was times where it looked like it was going to be. Um, but if Aiden Pr Prince is someone you're bringing on and he's got talent and why is he just taking this L immediately to a mid Carter? I, I, that's, that's wild to me, man. Um, <laughs> it's it's like John Schuyler, like he just came out the door losing, you know. Like there was, <laughs> you bring these guys, you sign them, and he just, there's just no. Sometimes you get that Masha Slamovich, you know, uh, squash match every week, and then sometimes you just come in and just you're just off to the races losing, you know. So the match was, you know, um, it it was okay. Um, after the match, they keep bringing in W Morrissey. I don't know where the fuck this is going. This is, I mean. Every week is the coming out and the power bomb. Like he was just challenging for the world title. Like this is what you're doing. Didn't he already wrestle Brian Myers in like a no holds barred match or something like those last street fight or whatever. Why? And that was before the world title, you know, where he's trying to win the belt. Like this is honestly, I think he's your top baby face and he's more over than Josh Alexander. So I think they're trying to put him in these segments because if they do, and he gets over, over, people are going to, they're worried they're, people are going to re reject Josh Alexander. That's my opinion. That's why he's not wrestling. He's just coming out and doing these like spots that I don't understand. And then they make Aiden Prince look like an absolute goof after the match. Um, just like they did with Fulton earlier. 
you know, Fulton went up and, you know, hit Josh just to get his ass kicked again. It reminded me when I was in high school, I know I'm backtracking here. I had a buddy who kind of got into a fight. He, uh, we were eating lunch and he had like a, um, one of those little salad dressing cups or whatever. And he, you know, threw it at this one dude and the guy gets up and just hits him with a couple boom boom you know and then he walks away and my, you know my buddy goes and taps him on the back pulls him around and by the time the guy turns around he drops him two more times you know and like i fortunately he's got a friend like me to go and break it up but that's what I, it actually took me back to that. I was like, that looked horrible. That was embarrassing for Fulton. And it was the same with, with uh, Aiden Prince, who's a baby face, just loses, goes and tries to get mad at what, why is he even mad at, at um, Morrissey for coming out? What's his beef with that? And then he just gets, I think he, I would imagine he got power, power bombed. I don't, I don't really remember, but just made him like, look like an absolute fool. And it, he's talented. I don't know if he can talk, but he's talented. But it just seems like he's just going to, uh, they're going to use him in that like Petey Williams role where like, oh shit, we need someone for the ultimate X match or the, the six way uh, fuck fest. Like we need, we'll just throw Aiden Prince in that. Like that's why it screams after that match. Because if you look at any wrestler, you get an idea of what the, company thinks of them by who they lose to and who they, who they beat. So if you're losing to underneath guys, you're losing to mid card guys, and then you're getting your ass whooped by bit by main eventers. It, that doesn't make it seem like they are going to do anything with them. There's nothing even to get excited about, you know? Uh, yeah. So, so uh, we'll see with that. After that, Masha Slamovich has a, has a, squash match against Abby Jane I believe her name was kind of like a knockoff of Kylie Ray didn't last too long um, they're doing a good job just keeping her away from the there's a lot of storylines going on with the knockouts right now so it she benefits from doing this right now um, then they run down the IW IPWF card or the uh, multiverse of matches card again the ex- same the, the same exact soundtrack of that, that we had in the first episode, I mean the first episode, earlier in the episode when they were running down the card, it was the same exact audio. They repeat, they played it a second time, but it was extended. Uh, so they ran down multiverse of matches again uh, to We Own the Night, and then promoted IPWF to We Own the Night, and then pro- promoted New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, they actually changed the song for this one. I'm bullshitting you. It was to We Own the Night. This played for, I, I told you guys I wrote down times. I actually can't read my uh, my writing on this one. Oh, two minutes and 32 seconds of We Own the Night. And uh, this was another thing I brought up too. The monthly shows have their own themes. And I really think that it'll come across, like you, when you're just reading off the three, three mat, like, They've had times where they've they've read off next week's Impact card, the upcoming YouTube show, and New Japan for three straight minutes over We Own the Night, and it's it, you're just a promoting an episode of Impact at that point. Like if you have a song for the YouTube show or the monthly special, use that for that part of the card. You know, like dude, that is not difficult. That is not a difficult concept, and it works because you know it's it controls people's emotions. You know, like when 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 things change and there's a roller like when you're on a roller coaster depending on what the roller coaster is doing you're either exhaling or you're anticipating or you're yelling because it does so many different things it's that way with music too like music gets people to react and if you're trying to make this card stand out the multiverse of matches like give it a cool song in the background you know what I'm saying? Like, if New Japan has a song, like, put that in the background. Like, it's it's not difficult to break shit up. And then the, ma- the main event was uh, the Bullet Club versus Motor City Machine Guns. I don't got anything to say other than that this was a good tag team match. Uh, the Bullet Club won this time. And I understand now, 
because when the bullet when the uh, Good Brothers were the champions and they did the three way tag match, I remember getting so upset. Like you guys had an opportunity to do the Good Brothers versus the versus the Bullet Club, and you're doing this three way match. And I get it now because number one, that was the watered down version of the Bullet Club. They had a a bigger vision for that, and then obviously you know the you know Good Brothers were going to rejoin, so they had to navigate through that and how they interacted with the bullet club. So it makes sense. So I was definitely wrong about that because they, they knew what they were doing. They knew, knew where they were going with it. And um, what I don't like about the bullet club, this is what I didn't like about ring of honor when I, when I used to watch it a lot. Um, and then, you know, the AEW does it too. Impact doesn't do this except the good brothers. They're heels and they are, they deliver a promo and they're, they're looking for the crowd reaction. You know, they're, they're trying to get the crowd involved and get them to cheer for them. And Jay White's promo skills are, are way better than most people on the impact roster. But the last promo he cut, he kept pausing to like get the fans to, to, to drink it in and let the build up the fans and stuff. I'm like, dude, you're, you're not a good guy, you know? But the Bullet Club does that. They, 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 they're like the, uh, the original. They do that. They does that. They do that. That's the word I'm looking for. They're like the original cool heels. You know, and I'm not a big cool heel fan. I don't, you know, it's just not my jam. I'm not, just saying, I'm not saying there's not some cool fa- heels that I like. You know, I'll cheer for the shit out of Steve Macklin, you know. But the, the, they're always looking for the pop. They're always looking for the reaction, you know. And that this is the match. This is motor machine guns. And I say that, um, you know, good brothers weren't the ones in this match, but they were earlier when they had the, uh, the match with a uh, swing, the chump chump challenge, you know, it was just like, Oh, let's, you know, get the, the, the fans involved. You know, like, I just, I just don't like that. Um, but, it, but this was a good match. The right team won the bullet club won, And then Chris Bay got the win. That's what we want to see. We got, we, we don't we don't want Chris Bay to be like the loser of the Bullet Club, like the Wheeler Yuta of the group that just just there to take the the pins all the time. You know, we want to see him get victories because that's our guy in that match. That's the guy that's there. Like the Motor City Machine Guns aren't even freaking signed. You know, like he's he's our guy that he's in New Japan. He has the potential more than anybody on the roster right now to appear on an AEW segment if the Bullet Club ends up over there in any way, shape, or form there's a possibility like he is one that we want to see get wins and to get, you know, to get some momentum, you know, so glad that it went off the air with that. So, but overall the show was cool. Again, I give it a, you know, a B minus mainly because the, this, the honor no more stuff has completely cooled off. Like there's no, we don't tune in for honor no more. We don't tune in for what is Eddie Edwards going to do as a heel this week. We just don't. They introduce Eddie, Eddie as the heel. He cuts the great promo one time, and then it's nothing. It's freaking jack shit after that. You know, so, you know, why get the OGK against some some chumps and, and let's see what they can do. You know, I've talked about a lot of the time we don't know a lot of wrestlers' finishers because they don't win matches. You know, do something. You know, get but the, but these guys have, like, they've cooled them off big time, and maybe it's because they're not going to be around. But if they're not going to be around, that means Eddie Edwards' heel turn is going to turn right back to a damn baby face. He's going to apologize. They probably told him, like, oh, that they'll forgive you, Eddie. We're going to do this heel thing. The fans are going to forgive you. Like, who cares about all that? Keep this fool up as a heel right now and make it big. Because they're obviously going to have Josh Alexander win, and then Eddie's going to challenge him. Like, we know where Bound for Glory is going. We, we can see that a mile away. Uh, but, you know, shit. You know, get – Get something going with these guys. Honor No More is, is one of the cooler parts of the show, and they're like completely uh, a complete mystery right now in, in the in the taping. So uh, that's all I got for you guys. Hope you guys uh, were able to rock with me okay on the uh, on the solo tip this week. Um, but you can check me at BQ Speaks on Twitter, um, and we'll be back soon. Probably no mailbag this week, but hopefully next week we'll get back on the ball with that. And then uh, TW and I will be dropping another cool factor next week. For BQ, I'm BQ. I'm out. Peace.